decide that winter is approaching, when the leaves turn brown on trees and began to fall, it's a sign that summer has ended and fall has begun. The world often loses hope and despair very easily, but God has sent us a sign that there is still hope. Oh, my friends, with hunger, devastation, war, and pestilence everywhere, it is so easy for us to conclude that God has turned a deaf ear to our problems. But I stopped by today to say to you that God has not. Instead, God has sent us a sign. That sign came to us in the company of many wondrous events some 2,000 years ago in a stable yonder in Bethlehem. As we think of the darkness of this era, let us look to the light of the Christ child as a sign that God is still on the throne and that he still controls this world. I know, I know, I know. Every time you turn on the TV, whether you're in Kansas City or California, Louisiana, wherever you are, Looks like not a day go by that there ain't something about Trump. Amen. We are not living in Trump's world. We're living in God's world. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. His birth is our sign. His life, his death, and resurrection are our confirmation that the promises of God still remain true. Our text this morning first considered that there are some who do not want a sign from God. The subject of this chapter of Isaiah is King Ahaz. King Ahaz was king of Judah in the southern kingdom. Ahaz, Ahaz, my friends, was disturbed over the possibility of Israel of the northern kingdom, along with Syria, a foreign nation, getting together to overthrow his kingdom. Details of a plan made to gain an ally in this fight is recorded in 2 Kings chapter 16, verses 7 and verses 8. A man who sent tributes, a man of silver and gold, to the Assyrian king to persuade him to help him protect you. Ahaz felt confident that Assyria would help him and he could be free to continue in idolatry as in times past. Isaiah chapter 7 focuses on God showing the king that the plan of Israel and Syria to overthrow Judah would not succeed. 
and that the throne of David would be secured by the promise to Messiah forever. God was going to save Ahaz, but Ahaz knew that that meant the elimination of the idolatry and pagan practices that was going on in Judah. Now, 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 Ahaz wanted to be saved from his enemies with the liberty to continue in his evil ways. Good God Almighty. He wanted to be free of the threat of attack. But at the same time, he wanted the freedom to worship idols and other forms of ungodliness. Are there not, are there not, are there not many today who also want to be protected from their enemies? but remain free to continue in their evil ways. There are too many who want the security of salvation, mm -hmm. but also want the freedom to spiritually destroy themselves. They want the assurance of the cross without jeopardizing their life in the fast lane. They want to go to heaven, but at the same time, they want to go through life as fast as they can, grabbing all the gusto that they can. Good God of mine. At verse seven through 10, God speaks to Ahaz and says, I will take care of these problems for you. You don't have to worry about these enemies of yours. Just let me handle them. In verse 11, God says to Ahaz, to confirm these things which I have said to you, just ask for a sign. If you ask for a sign, I will show you. Ask what you will, whether it's in heaven or on earth, God said, I'll do it. Right. Good God of mine. Ahox rejected God's offer to give him a sign. Well, why? He did not need a sign to let him know God's power. He knew it and had witnessed it in many times past. He did not want God's help because he felt he already had his bases covered without God. He responded in verse 12 that he did not want to tempt God. Oh, my friends, there are, there, are, there are many today who do not turn to God because they think they have their bases already covered. Mm -hmm. Their response is, I don't need God for my daily living. I have a good job at Jeremiah. Uh, my business is doing well. My, 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 my job, my faces are covered. Furthermore, with these, I can freely continue this worldly lifestyle that I enjoy. Those who desire to do God's will reject Ahaz's approach, and they embrace Gideon's example. You remember Gideon, don't you? Yes. As he as he felt led 
to take 30,000 men in the battle. Gideon asked the Lord to send him a sign in Judges chapter 6, verse 37 to 40. Gideon placed a woolen fleece on the ground. And he asked the Lord to make the fleece wet. Amen. But let the ground all around it be dry. When it was answered, he asked the Lord for another sign. By doing it, but he wanted the Lord to do it just the opposite. This time. Do I have a way? Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. It is no crime to ask the Lord for a sign. Asking for a sign is not a sign of doubt, but it is a sign. We just want some confirmation to make sure that you that, that your message is right. But when we ask the Lord for a sign, we need to be careful because in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, it reminds us that Satan has the power to create and emulate signs and wonders that look like they come from the Lord. You remember, don't you, when Moses stood before Pharaoh, he presented the Pharaoh with many signs and wonders yes. to confirm that he spoke the will of God. Yes. But Pharaoh's physicians, yes. amen, magicians, amen, he created several of his signs. Yes. Moses threw down his rod and it turned into a snake. Amen. And then he went over and poured some water into the river Nile, and it turned into blood. Yes. Amen. And then uh, the magician of, uh, 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 of the Pharaoh, amen, threw down other rocks, and they turned into serpents. And then they messed around and took some water and it turned into blood. Amen. And then Moses, raw, then turned around and ate up all of them little rods and snakes. Good God Almighty. Amen. You may be able to do the devil what you think God can do. Amen. But God can do it right. And bigger. Amen. Do I have a witness? We pray to the Lord for help on our life heal. And then I, amen, if we pray to the Lord for help on our life heal. And then a cashier down at the local supermarket gives us $20 too much in change on the surface. It appears like a sign from the law. But Satan has tempted us when we were in our lowest point by appealing to be an answer to prayer. Some signs, my friends, may be sure signs, but they're not signs from the law. Nick Rowe Folklore says, when your right eye jumps, it's a sign that good news yeah. is coming. When your left hand itches, it's a sign that some money is coming. Amen. When your right hand itches, it's a sign that you will lose some money. All right. Amen. When your left eye burns, it's a sign that somebody is talking bad about you. Amen. When your right ear burns, it's a sign that somebody is talking good about you. When your nose itches, it's a sign that somebody's 
coming your way. Amen. When the bottom of your foot itches, it means you'll soon be walking on strange ground. These may sometimes be true, but they're not signs from the Lord. A sign from the Lord is confirmed in word, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and instituted by the hand of God. The Lord told Ahaz, you don't want a sign, but I'm going to give you one anyway. I'm going to solve your immediate problem, but uh, I'm going to give the world a sign a few years from now to remind them that the Lord is still on the throne. A few years from now, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. The birth of this child will be my sign to a world broken in despair that there is still hope. This child shall be my sign. When darkness covers the land, that I'm able to turn darkness into light. That although war is talked about in every home, there will be peace on earth and goodwill toward all me. That although problems uh huh. Make life difficult. Yes. That God will make a way somehow. Yes. This child is a special child. Yes. For I do said in chapter 9, verse 6 from under us a child is born. Yes. Under us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. This child is a sign of un. Ending love. Right. John 3.16 reminds us that God so loved the world yes. that he yes. gave us his only begotten son right. that whosoever right. believe in him should not perish right. but have everlasting life. This promise was made to Isaiah 700 years before it actually happened. But this morning in the Gospel of Luke, do I have a witness? John, Luke says, I'm in the sixth month. Amen. God sent the angel Gabriel over to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, yeah, yeah. to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Yeah, yeah. A description of David, the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Yes. Mary was greatly troubled at his salutation. Yes, and uh, he said to Mary, you are going to give birth to a child. Yes. Mary wanted to know how can this thing be? Because I've never been with a man. I tell you, God can work it out. The angel 
said, the Holy Spirit is going to come over you and overshadow you and you will get pregnant. Good God Almighty and Mary gave him permission to do it and the angel went on and left but Mary, good God Almighty, got pregnant. Do I have a witness that Jesus was born nine months later in a stable yonder in Bethlehem. If God says it, it will happen. He's able to do it. Thank God today. He's able to give us a sign. And that sign is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. In these days and in these times, all my friends, people want everything else except Christ. Because when you have to when you get Christ, you have to let some other things go. Amen. But he's the most valuable gift. Do I have a witness? Amen. 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 When we first received Christ, amen, we, we, we wanted him, but we didn't want him real bad. Amen. Because we kept on doing the side step. Do I have a witness? Yeah. Keep on going to the club. Do I have a witness? Man. You just kept on, good God am I, twisting that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. All night, Saturday night, and then you come into the church and get in the choir. Amen with the red eye. Good grace of the life. But then an old mother would pull you to the side and say, baby, you can't do it like that. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to let go and let God. Amen. And then finally, you let go and let God. Amen. But that don't mean, amen, that the devil is through with the church. Because he'll visit you right in the church house. Do I have a witness? You can be sitting right up in here and a thought go through your head. Just as straight out of hell as it can be. Good praise of the Lord. Amen. Give a damn fella walk down the aisle. <laughs> Somebody said, no, amen. <laughs> what? <laughs> amen. Now you just have to listen. <laughs> <laughs> you have a <laughs> Your mind for the rest of that sentence is waiting on the benediction. <laughs> amen. Because you got some information to give.
And this is not the time. Yeah. Not the place. Yeah. We come here to praise the Lord. Yeah. For his son that he gave us, which was his son. Yeah. Say thank you, Jesus. Jesus. For your son. For your son. Amen. 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 If he had not come, you and I would still be in our sins. Yes. But thank God, thank God. he came. Amen. Amen. He died. Was buried. Amen. And if he had not got up, we'd still be in our sins. Thank God he didn't get up. Amen. amen. The Bible tells us that. Amen. If we confess him with our mouth, the Lord Jesus believe in our heart that God what? Raised him from the dead. He said, Thou what? Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Amen. That means you can be saved today. At any time, at any place. But then you have to realize who you are. That you are a sinner. Because the scripture says, all have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. Amen. It went on to say that the wages of our sins is dead. Pay we get for the sin we do is dead. Amen. Amen. Speaking of both physical death and spiritual death. Amen. All of us are going to pay the debt to die. We, we're not going to get out of here unless Christ comes back and get us. Amen. Without dying. But when you die, you do not have to die spiritually. Uh, spiritual death is the separation of your soul from God. Uh, that's eternally. Amen. But if you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, amen. If you will be quick, made alive, amen. And then that new soul then we'll be, we're going to be with the Lord. And then when he comes back after the body, those two will be reunited. And then we'll spend eternity, amen, in the new heaven and in the new earth with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now everybody is going to live forever. But the difference is, is why you live in that. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now you can either live with the Lord in heaven, or that you love the devil so much, he said, oh, come on down here. He said, I'm not in that. So I'm not going to treat you like you at home. <laughs> Amen. And so he said, I got a whole lot of fire. Amen. People today want to believe that there ain't no hell. But I don't know if, you, if this year when the weather gets good, uh, if you haven't ever, uh, amen, uh, have you ever seen the water come out of the earth hot? Uh, it's just spewing out of the earth. Have you ever seen that? Hot water coming out of the earth. Go out to Yellowstone <coughs> National Park, and uh, they got they got a they got a name out right there. They call him Old Faithful. You ever heard Old Faithful? At the same time, every day, people gather. They they built a they built a building there. Got benches where you can come and sit at that, at that hour every day. Amen. Hot water. 
she, she, she rides the earth all the way up higher than this building. Amen. And all around there, 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 there were springs. There was well, a hot water was running all the time. And that let us know that there's fire in the earth. Amen. Amen. And every so often, amen, the Lord will belch, and we call it a volcano. Spew <laughs> it out. And, and then, 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 I just want to give you a little synopsis and uh, make up your mind that that's not where you want to go. Amen. That's not where you want to go. Amen. Amen. You can come and come to Jesus. Come to Jesus.